anyway, I just, I do, I think that, I think that obviously skipping over the first one does allow them to have a little bit more wealth. This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned into episode 159 of The Real Word. Word is up. We've got millennials changing the luxury market as our first racket, Nicole. You hate mm -hmm. when I do this when I actually tell people what we're going to be talking no, about. No, I love it. T t talk away. But I think it's important because if you want to skip to the next one, you can. We're going to be talking about eight time wasters agents should avoid. This is a Jay Thompson article. Jay Thompson, of course... Uh, the guy who gets a whole bunch of heat on Facebook via his Zillow days. And then our Marketeer of the Week, somebody that's using IG Reels very well. So let's get right into racket number one. Obviously, Nicole, we're not sitting next to each other. I know we it's are. a sad day, but I still it have is. this great up light behind me. So I know, I, you've got the good I'm lighting. like, I'm really rocking out today. Although I have the headphones on, and I'm not a headphone gal, but... My lighting is going to suffer compared to yours, but that's okay. That's all right. I'm all right with it. All right, racket number one, millennials yep. are changing the luxury real estate market. This is according to Bloomberg. We'll link it up as we always do if you want to check out the article. And at 38% millennial adults born from 1981 to 1996 represent the largest share of home buyers in the U.S. 38% of adults are millennials. Nicole, were you? did you just sneak in? Were you I 81? just snuck in. I'm an 81er, yep. Mm -hmm. You always say you're not a millennial, but you have well, to start including yourself. Well, because there's including a, yourself. Well, I, I'll include myself, but there's like this, um, and you always make fun of me for even bringing it up, but there's like this 10-year in between that like we're millennials, but we're, but we're also, what, what's the other, what's the one prior? Oh, I don't remember the name of it. I'll have to Google it. But there's like this like 10-year gap yeah, there's, where there's I'm- There's an in-between. There's a two-year in-between. Like, I'm kind of in-between because like I didn't have computers or a cell mm. phone like in elementary or middle or even really in high school, I didn't even have a cell phone. But um, so well, it kind of- Well, neither did I. It takes us- matter. Well, I mean, you're, but it, you're like two years I, older than I'm me. hearing you, but I'm saying though, like, but when you're talking about 1996, like they probably did, you know? Oh, yeah. The-, the, the, the 1994, 95, 96 millennials are much different than the early Way 80 millennials different. like we you and I. We are very different beings, yeah. yes. All right, Bradley Nelson, chief marketing officer for Sotheby's, says they want to buy a home. They're interested in owning a home. They just waited longer to buy their first one, which, so, you know, a lot of times first-time home buyers, obviously, they buy a starter home, uh, something really affordable, maybe a fixer-upper. Because condo. millennials, yeah, or a condo, exactly. I think you bought a condo for your first home, right? I did, yeah. I Me bought a, a two-family in a crappy neighborhood, and it was definitely a fixer-upper. So, like, yeah, one of those starter homes. I was trying to hack with the rent. You were doing it with the condo, obviously, to, to keep the price down and, and the maintenance down. Mm -hmm. uh, but millennials, probably these ones that we're talking about, you know, born in the 90s, they've waited longer. They saved more money. They didn't get hurt in the last housing crisis, and they've got more money to spend, so they're in the luxury market. Here's the other thing that's interesting, uh, according to Bloomberg, is that millennials are the most educated generation in history. They have a higher uh, earnings, and they're set to inherit more than any prior generation. Uh, this is in the Bloomberg, but it's actually according to Brookings Institute, a May 2020 report by them. So they've just got more dough than most of these other uh, generations. Well, it's also because they didn't buy those condos either. So they definitely True. were sitting on their money a little bit longer. But yeah, I mean, of course, I mean, I, I, and I hate to like say, again, like you're talking about inheriting. And, and so obviously if, if parents are passing. I don't um, fall into that category. You are definitely, um, you know, grabbing some money from all those baby boomers. But I, I think that skipping that first purchase as much as we're all talking about putting your money into the real estate market, I think it, you know, in this situation, it probably has helped them, especially if they weren't wasting it. I do, I do agree. I, I think that a lot of them, I mean, even just with like stocks and then, you know, sort of get, get throwing their money into things that made sense or even just like multiple streams. I mean, think about even, I, I know that, I know that we're sort of, well, anyway, 
I just, I do, I think that, I think that obviously skipping over the first one does allow them to have a little bit more wealth. Baby boomers, baby boomers are retiring to sunnier locales while remote work has allowed millennials to ascend the housing ladder in smaller, more affordable cities. Uh, we have we have seen that obviously in 2020 where uh, the smaller cities, millennials have like loved the big city, New York City, L.A., that whole lifestyle and not as much obviously over the last year. Um, but uh, that was a Sotheby's global luxury report in uh, in this year. From, well, from but January. we've always talked about that, though, that people being drawn to things that are, you know, walkability, um, even if it's not a large city, even if you're talking about a small town, people prefer to be closer to like greens and downtowns mm -hmm. where they could access restaurants. And I still think that that's true. I mean, I don't know many people that want to be too far away from anything that's easily accessible. Seventy two point one million millennials. 72 plus million so by far the largest adult generation right now and a lot of them still have not bought their first home so when when like we talk about that zillow stat or, or not stat but theory that there's going to be even more transactions usually the u.s trades at about six million just about six million transactions per year zillow thinks that could even go as much as 10 million transactions a year one of the driving forces is how many millennials there still are that haven't bought their first home and then t to further that point how many millennials have bought their first home but are going to start trading and reshuffling around we, we always talk about the great reshuffling uh so there's a there is a lot of transactions still to come and baby boomers they reference the baby boomers moving to um you know southern states and and sunny locations as they retire there are so many transactions, even when we're sitting here in an inventory starved market, there are so many transactions building up. Well, I think that that's important to bring up too, though, is, is, is because our inventory is so low, could there be even more transactions if there were, if there was the ability to buy more? Um, yeah, it definitely do, would be. I mean, I, I do think what's, what's really important right now is for builders to sort of, you know, sort of see what's happening here because they have this incredible opportunity to really sort of capture these buyers especially if they're you know skipping over that first time um how like the first time buyer like the, the, the again like that kahondo or that entry level i mean this is going to be an incredible opportunity for them to like have these buyers jumping into these you know communities if they're able to grab their hands like if they're able to get their hands on land um yeah but yeah, no, I do and think that again with the lack of inventory, there could actually be a lot more transactions if if, if we just had the had the, the properties to, to to sell. And millennials that have saved up are going to want new. They're going to want some really high end tech into their home if they can afford it. So all this kind of makes sense. I, I don't think it's a racket. I don't think seventy two million millennials are going to end up in the luxury category. Not all of them are, of course, you know, making that type of income, but. All right, check out the rest of the article. Well, but like, I think what's super interesting below. is obviously it won't be it won't be a luxury property, but definitely like you were saying before, like luxury items for sure. Yeah, um, I think Amenities, certainly yeah. absolutely, you know, pick that over square footage every day of the week. All right, racket number two, Jay Thompson, our old Zillow friend, still on Facebook chatter all the time, wrote an Inman article, eight time wasters agents should avoid. Here's a look at some of the biggest time sucks real estate agents are up against in today's world in hopes that you don't fall into these traps. Uh, well, so we let's should try to help do like a, not have, waste their time. See if you've wasted your time on them. Yeah, well, I can tell you definitely, number one, scanning social media, I have wasted plenty of time doing that. I would say, listen, it, it says, obviously, if you're just going to get sucked into consuming content all day, that's bad. But if you're consuming content from the angle of how do I make mine better? How do I learn from somebody in this industry that's really doing good? Like you sent uh, a couple of really good Instagram links to the team recently, Nicole, this week, recently, like two days ago, yes. Monday, mm -hmm. on tips on how to start your videos. That was you consuming three reels that were 
very educational that help agents put together their videos. Right. Well, I think, though, too, I think if you are going to be, you know, participating in social media, because you are, I mean, it's inevitable. No one's going to say, no, I don't ever go on Facebook. But I I think on top of actually consuming it, if you're responding or talking or building a relationship through that, I think then hopefully it's not a waste of your time because again whether it's another agent and you can you know build some sort of referral platform or maybe it's an old client that you haven't seen in forever i mean as long as you're really sort of participating in the social media i think it's much much more beneficial than just streaming through but i'll admit there are some nights where i just zone out on tiktok and i it's it's just fun (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that being said, TikTok is the biggest waste of time it ever. Waste of time. It is such a time waster. I mean, I there's think times TikTok... I, I feel like when you first learned about TikTok, you and I were chatting and like you, you fall down a rabbit hole. It's like hours and hours of your time. I, I think we're going to laugh about TikTok in about three years. We are going to be laughing at TikTok. I, I don't know for Me, sure. I, I don't know, honey. I think it's. I think that TikTok is probably what really helped a lot of us get through the pandemic, though. I, I mean, agree. It, it really I made it, it. made things funny. It made things, you know, a little less real. Um, I think that we were able to laugh at ourselves. I think we were able to all sort of relate. But then it was also fun to 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 really engage too. You know, like there was like there's all the TikTok competitions and. I, I, I think that for the pandemic, I think that TikTok was probably one of the greatest things that that could have happened and helped. And when I say laugh, I think we're going to look back on these beginning TikTok days and just be like, as humans, we were insane at the yeah. beginning of TikTok. This right. is crazy stuff. Right. Well, but I think it's a, I think it's the same thing, though, with Facebook, too. Like, I remember doing Facebook videos at the very beginning and they were shitty quality. Now yes. it's like everything has to be like edited and you have to have like a copywriter and like it has to be like beautiful or like it doesn't gain traction. So I think as, as much as we will laugh, I think that we'll also probably miss the beginning days when it was just a little bit more like, you know, organic. Yeah. Fun. yeah. Yeah, because they haven't shoved ads down everybody's throat. Right. That is definitely coming. Uh, so, all right, kind of a half a racket there. Number two, complaining about and attacking individuals and businesses. Yeah, complaining is always, always a, waste a racket. Of time. Always a racket. That's definitely, definitely uh, true there. Number three, having hurt feelings. Spending time feeling hurt about hmm. something said on social media is more pointless, wasted time and energy. Hmm. Totally agree. Um, I ag- listen, I think I agree. This is a. Are they posting I, I know, about being hurt? Go. Are they being Are they posting about being hurt? Or are they just hurt? Like I'm just, just hurt. Spending time feeling bad feeling hurt. about you know like feeling hurt about something that was said about you on social media. So maybe you post a video. Like here's an example. You post a video. I sold this house on one twenty three Main Street. We got four offers. We got twenty thousand over ask price. And somebody writes in the comments. Just some like troll says. Right. Oh, all these homes are way overpriced. Whoever bought this home, they're going to be uh, hating themselves okay. in three years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're like, oh my gosh, like I'm yeah. selling. I'm, I helped out my client. Oh, no, what I usually I just, I hide, I hide, I hide those comments. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying sitting there and dwelling on, oh, sure. you know, this person's opinion of what's going on in the real estate market who has no clue what's going on in the real estate market because they're not looking at the fact that 44% of people don't even have a mortgage today where in comparison 2006 people were sucking money out of their homes at a ridiculous rate they, they're not digging into the education like we are so spending time dwelling on that would be pointless right agreed yeah multitasking number four this is a this is something that i think every agent does and they do it poorly so many people try to multitask and, and i get it like single mothers we have a lot of them on our team they're probably the best at it because they have to do it all the time and and i was just saying to somebody actually today i was like we love single mothers because they just work faster than all the guys they can respond quicker they can move quicker because they're used to being like on their toes at all times yeah i'm not a single parent um but i try to but you're a mother so it's kind of like i'm a mom yeah um I'm, I fail at it. I, 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 again, I think I actually just talked about it last week in our accountability. The fact that my day is taking so much longer because while I'm taking a shower or I get out of the shower, I'm getting ready. I'm reading an email, which then leads into me responding to that email while I'm still like not even like, so even just sometimes getting ready in the morning can take hours. Um, I'm a horrible multitasker, but I guess the problem here too is, is that like with like our phones now, it's almost like we're required to like multitask. Like, 
we have to be on at all times. And, and Jay sums this up. The science is clear. Multitasking doesn't work. So you can go and kind of dig into some of that science if you care to. But yeah. I would agree uh, you're much more productive when you focus in on a time-blocked uh, objective and just knock it out. All right, right, number five, poor planning. So when it comes to getting things done, often it's tempting to wing it. You will actually get things done better and quicker if you plan ahead, uh, not a racket. But then he goes number six, analysis paralysis, which is kind of like, you know, you don't want to over plan. So it's like number five, this could have been like 5A. That being said, don't get stuck in like just coming up with ideas all the time and never getting anything done. You know, Art Williams, my favorite quote of all time, or uh, favorite speech of all time, rather. Everybody should go look this one up. It's just simply labeled, do it. Art Williams, I think this is back in like 1978. He's talking about smart people. He says, you know, uh, smart people oftentimes can't even uh, get themselves in and out of the rain because they're always thinking of a better way to do it. They're always thinking and thinking and theorizing instead of just doing. Right. Smart people often never around getting, uh, never get well, around that, to getting does, anything done. That does go along with planning though too. I mean, if you're just coming up with ideas without a plan, without execution, I mean, you say it all the time, like great idea, like what's the plan, you know? Right. Th then you're not doing it unless they're, you know, unless you do have a plan. So, I mean, they do kind of go hand in hand. The point is, have the plan and then go right. execute on it nothing has to be perfect right and uh and, and he sums it up with that so i agree with him there number seven looking at our phone i would definitely encourage every real estate agent to take notifications off 98 percent of your apps if you are you know approved for a zillow growth partnership like we are and you're accepting leads, that's an app you want to have. If you have your CRM, Follow Up Boss, or Boomtown, or whatever CRM you're using, you want your push notifications on that. You don't need push notifications for TikTok being on, okay? So you need to go through your apps and say, okay, TikTok, I don't need notifications. I don't need Facebook notifications. I can go use Facebook during my social media time block on my time. I don't need to be looking at all these pings every five seconds. I, I, I get. I think we talked about this. So remember, did you did you ever watch the Social Dilemma? You ended up watching that, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you did. I don't. You didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. That was Netflix. Yeah, I thought that you had ended up. I watching I should go back it. and you watch should. it. Because I, I think what's really interesting there is I, I think even now. if you turn the notifications off, like they're like. You're, you're you're almost at this point trained like you're addicted to it so you have to uh, like you're saying if you do time block it at least then your brain could potentially know that you have a time to check your phone but i mean that's, that's i basically that's, time block my social media i'm not on there all day you're not on and, there all day i, I mean if, no sometimes if i'm just waiting in line at the grocery store i i scroll it you know I was walking through the grocery door store the other day. So that being said, I'll say this. I was walking through the grocery store and I had my phone. I didn't have my headphones. And like if I'm in the grocery store, I want to be listening to something. I, I don't really want to be listening to other people, people. think about what cereal yeah. they're going to buy. Yeah. So I didn't have my headphones and I was just walking around like this with my speaker up against my ear <laughs> listening to, I think it was like a Dave Portnoy podcast or something. I was just like, <laughs> like a freak. So then you were that guy. Yeah, I was yeah, that guy. Yeah. Annoying. It was on speakerphone blasting. I'm sure. And you just didn't you didn't give two hoots. No, I nope. was in and out. So yeah. I think I was, you know, getting coconut water and kiwis or something like that. But again, watch the social dilemma. It's a it's a very interesting and, and quite scary um little series there on on what they're doing to us. But I agree. Turn your notifications right. off. Number eight to wrap this up, time wasters, according to Jay Thompson, not asking for help. Absolutely. Uh, don't try to do this business by yourself. Solo agents, the single agent working alone, not getting support from a brokerage or a team or a coach is absolutely dead in the water in 2021. So uh, go get some help for sure. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Marketeer of the week. It's a friend of mine. You guys are buddies? He's a, like you chat often? Yeah. We're... We don't chat often. He's not like in my mastermind, but he is a Tom Ferry guy. So mm -hmm. I want to say that. Obviously, I got a lot of friends in the Tom Ferry network. Chris Kwan completely stole the idea that you have had analysis paralysis. I've on had analysis for at least paralysis. A week and well, a half. yeah, I mean, ever since ever since uh, the Bucks made it to the Super Bowl, it's like that's what I wanted. I was I was going to rip off Tom Brady and 
he beat me to the punch today. Let's let's actually right now play the Tom Brady and the and let's go side by side if well, we could. Well, so he used he, the video that he used was a prior video. He didn't use the most recent video. Um, well, no, because here. So when the video you sent me, just so everybody knows, yes, Tom Brady did a TikTok after the Bucks beat uh, the Green Bay Packers in the NFC Championship. He did a TikTok of him and Gronk mm -hmm. with the song. Uh, who that's that's like a bad boy song, right? Yeah, Puff Daddy. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, plays this this winning strut as they're going to the team plane. Super excited. Bad uh, boys you know, for we're life. not going. We're not going anywhere. Yep. Bad boys for life. Yep. Well, that was a redo of them doing it on their last Super Bowl journey. So, so they were redoing. It. Yeah. It. Yes. He, no, Tom Brady redid it of himself. Yes. He already had no, not here. So Chris saying, Kwan used the original, the original New one. England Patriot yes. one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so you saw you saw the new one yep. on on a reel or on TikTok. I think it was on TikTok that you saw it. Um, uh, I think I saw it on Instagram. He kind of put it everywhere. Oh, you saw it on the reel? Yeah, yeah I he think put I it did. everywhere. Yeah. So you sent it to me like we got to do this. I'm like, yes, it's so cool. I love I, you know I loved it. We we should remake it. I, I agreed with you. And then you kept talking about it for like a week, and mm -hmm. you're like, we should do it. We I keep do on it. talking do about it. it instead of just doing it. You mm -hmm. keep still talking about I'm it. Well, still Chris Kwan just it. went. And did it. He so did to it. our point in, in the second racket, you just got to like take action on this stuff mm -hmm. when you have a great idea. Mm -hmm. and, and Chris did it. So let's play both of them. Let's play TB and Chris Kwan side by side. Can you do that? Yeah, let's play them side by side because there's no talking. Well, there's side by side. No, there's no talk. It's a cell song. All right. Watch those. Enjoy them. Remake them. Nicole and I are going to remake it. We're totally it. doing it. Even if we're behind the ball, we're still. Why not? It's just a good song. Go, I feel like it just like it. I get excited. And go follow Chris. He's doing a lot with video. He's very talented. Uh, I think he's he's doing a really good job. I like I like checking him his stuff out. Go follow him. Make sure you're subscribed to the Real Word, and we'll see you here next week. Bye, guys. Keep it real.